I often have clients that'll do some sort of water challenge and they wanna have a body of water in the thumbnail. Okay, YouTuber in LA who has beautiful beaches and hot weather everywhere, that's real nice. But here in Ontario, even though we're known for having all these great lakes apparently, I don't see any water anywhere. Is that a cat? Today we're actually gonna get really resourceful. We don't need a body of water around us to get beautiful reflections of flooded areas. That's because we have a Photoshop plugin called Flood 2 by the company Flaming Pear. Before we can use the plugin, first we're gonna need a picture that we can flood. Hello. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna photograph these cows back here in this kinda mucky field, and then we're gonna Photoshop them into a beautiful landscape filled with water. <laughs> Yikes. I see what you're doing. Didn't work so well, did it? Hello. <laughs> so the goal with the Flood 2 plugin is to have a quite a bit of space between you and your subject so that you can fill that area up with water. Why don't I just show you how it's done? See you guys. Let's go. All right, so here's one of the pictures I took of the cows before things got uh, interesting. So as you can see, it's a pretty pleasing image in the top half. We got the nice old barn and the two cows and some foliage in the background, nice lighting. But uh, down here, it's just like, there, there, there isn't much. So as planned, we're gonna go ahead and use the Flood 2 plugin. After you've installed it, go up to Filter, Flaming Pair, and Flood 2. Now it'll bring up this dialog box. The first thing we have to do is set the horizon line. We have to kind of guess since it's covered up a little bit, but you just use the slider to put it to about where it would be. I think it'd be like right there. The next step is offset. So that's like, if you don't see the horizon line, how far down would you see the water? I'd put it maybe here. Um, perspective. I think this is the perspective of the waves. Now that we see the light source in the water, we can use this to move where the sun is. I'm going to say kind of over here because that's where it's brightest in the sky. Then the last slider is spin and that's only if you're working with a crooked image. But in our, in our picture today, it's nice and straight so we can just leave it at zero. Now we get to adjust the waves. So let's, uh, let's, let's decide how wavy we want it. I'm going to have it quite low, nice and calm. Oh, there we go, we're getting nice reflections. As you can see, zero is like pretty much a mirror reflection. You can just go up to like seven or so, you got those nice little waves. Complexity, like a low complexity. Maybe some around there. Brilliance, ooh. That's how like dark it is. So like 100% as you can see is like nice and bright, while, while zero would be like pretty much black. I think nighttime would sort of be like around here. Uh, the, oh yeah, and then the ripple. So I don't really like the reflection we have on the water now that we've changed the waves. I'm gonna play around with this a little bit more. So now I'm just gonna go back and fine tune a little bit. All right, I think we're pretty much good now. So I'm just gonna click okay. As you can see, this just totally changes the feeling of the image. It makes it so much more peaceful and tranquil. In my opinion, it just tells a bit more of a story. It looks like a peaceful pasture, not a, not a muddy hellhole <laughs> or whatever. I don't know what it is. They seem pretty happy, actually. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit more interesting. So we've got this floating cow head here. Um, let's just say we want it to look like it's merged in the water. Basically, you just place it where you'd like it to be. So let's just have it maybe like here. We'll make it almost look like a hungry, hungry hippo. There, and then we're gonna go back up to filter, flaming pair, flood two. Now we're just gonna move down the offset to a level that we'd like it. Maybe there, click okay. Okay, so as you can see, our floating cow head that doesn't have a torso apparently, or has a very tiny torso behind it. Uh, its reflection matches the rest of the water around it. That's because it's on a separate layer. If we move it around, it doesn't quite fit the reflection, but if we leave it right where we rendered it, it the, the patterns of the, of the reflection should line up with the reflection in the background. So why don't I open up another example? 
Get it? <laughs> island buoy, island boy. Anyway, so as you can see, I used the flood plugin in the background on, on the sky, the island, and the ship, and you can see the reflections in the background. But then I did a separate one just for the layer with our island buoy. I got the foreground popping nice, and then the background nice and faded so that you can throw in some text nice and easy for the thumbnail. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning about the Flood 2 plugin. This isn't a paid endorsement, it's just something that I use and I think is a bit of a cheat code for people wanting to add water to an image that most people don't know about. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you next time.